politicians. We, we'd like to introduce, we'd like to give you the Bell 40 bump here on leftrightcorrect.com and hopefully that you'll ascend to become our next city councilor. Thank you. And uh, I, I, um, you know, I think uh, I mentioned to you last night, right, right before the Steve Marchand became mayor, and he was here in studio, and, and also uh, Tom Brady, right before he became mayor. So, uh, you know, if all the trend seems to be, you know, that whenever I have a city councilor in my in my studio, that the next election they become mayor. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I may I introduce you to Mayor, uh, our next new mayor, <laughs> Jack Dorson. I think it sounds good. It's a good get a good ring to it, Mayor Jack Dorson. Well, uh, you know, I, I don't want to break your your. Um, uh, your run rate here. Uh, uh, I am not running for mayor, and I don't think anybody really runs for mayor, right. mayor anyway. Uh, right. Just to explain to our listeners that the city councilor with the most amount of votes becomes the mayor. And that's correct. Uh, you know, the most important uh, job, I think, is, is just to get on the council and to have that one vote. The mayor has one vote, everyone else has one vote. When the issues come out, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the city councilor listening to the residents, deciding what is best for the city. He's got one vote, he's got to make it good, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I want to do. You know, don't, does the mayor make any more money than the rest of the city councilors? Well, I think uh, marginally. <laughs> I mean, you know, the <laughs> city council, the, the city, I don't know what the city council <laughs> makes. I think it's like a hundred bucks or right. two hundred bucks or right. something right. like that, you know. Yeah, thank, thank Big all the city councilors for your time, because obviously it's a, it's obviously, a, you're not doing it for the money. Which is, you know, which is why I think New Hampshire New Hampshire has the best government, I think, uh, of any other state. I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, not that I know of all of the states, but I lived in Massachusetts and I can tell you it's a disaster down there. And it's because we pay our politicians. I mean, our state reps are horrible. The laws they put out are terrible. The, the economy's much worse than here in New Hampshire. But look at all the colleges they have. And they yeah, have such huge you know, advantages. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. We, we have a citizen legislature, mm -hmm. and, and in, a, in the truest sense of the term. They're not paid. Uh, they, there's no uh, you know, um, uh, it's not a career, let me put it that way, Where, whereas in a lot of states being a legislator mm -hmm. is a career. Yeah. And so you become a political animal. You become that politician mm -hmm. uh, when you are receiving money from it. But in, in our state legislature, uh, we, we don't do that. We have citizen, uh, now, now I, will, I will tell you this, there was some discussion a couple of years ago of starting to pay our legislators, and the, and the argument went along these lines. Uh, there's so much work to be done, there's so much uh, effort that has to be put in that uh, a, a regular person cannot uh, afford to be a legislator because he's got to work, you know, and he's got to have an income. So then why not give legislators an income in order for them to be able to spend the time doing the work for us? Uh, I have a couple answers to that. Uh, number one is maybe we don't want them doing so much because, you know, the more they craft, uh, you know, legislation, it seems like the more money is coming out of our pocket or we lose our freedom somehow, we can't move around as much, things like that. Um, maybe less loss is better, I don't know. I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so less so laws are better. I, I, I can only imagine that if we have a paid legislature, they become a separate animal that may or may not have our own interests heart. And so I think a, I think a citizenship, uh, a citizen legislature as we have in New Hampshire is very, very important. Uh, really, I wish uh, other uh, other legislatures did the same thing that we do. Exactly. I mean, I, I think we do have the best, and one of the best run state governments in the country. And, uh, you know, with the, and I think we have the third largest legislative uh, body with, uh, with the in, in the world. In the world, right. And it works. And uh, like the, we were talking about reforms to the federal government, and one that came up last night, Steve Erickson and uh, was, what Tom was talking about, I, I can't remember the name of the plan, but instead of having just two state reps for the state of New Hampshire, uh, we have quite a few of them, quite a few more, so that if we have the same, um, we, we don't have so many people being represented by one person in Washington. And I think that would go a long way. I think we should dramatically increase the size of the, uh, of the Congress. And that way, it would be much more, I'd say, representative of the people instead of just because then the lobbyists wouldn't be able to buy off all the politicians either. There'd be too many of them to buy. It makes it too expensive. For exactly them. right. <laughs> and, and you know, again, I, I don't blame the lobbyists. I really don't because they're doing what's in the best interest of their shareholders. And if they didn't, they'd get fired, and they, you know, the company would hire somebody else. 
And you know, you can't blame the company because they're trying to make the most amount of money for their shareholders, as I said. So I can't blame the lobbyists. I have to blame the politicians and the system itself that, that basically rewards politicians for selling out. And so that's why, you know, that's why we were together last night too to discuss what uh, what Steve Erickson is introducing to the world and hopefully to the country to rebuild democracy. And uh, one of the key components of rebuild democracy, as we discussed before, is term limits, so that you know career politicians wouldn't have that option. I mean, it, people who wanted to get into it for a career wouldn't have that option. They they would be you know they would serve their time, whether it be you know eight years in, in the Congress and twelve years in the Senate. It's still twenty years. You could still be a congressman for eight years and then a senator for twelve more. That's twenty years in Congress, and then you could run for president if you want or governor. So I still don't think we're limiting anybody's options by instituting term limits. And I don't hear any rational arguments against term limits. So therefore, I'm going to declare it's the correct answer dot com. Pay $1,000 if you can rationally give me a reason why we, we don't need term limits. Well, you know, this feeds into the same reason why uh, our citizen legislature here in, in, in New Hampshire is uh, so effective. Uh, because um, uh, we, we don't want professional politicians. 